In June 2019, a concept came to life in Kwani, Abuja. The BD Health Foundation, a demonstration center, embarked on a mission. They started an initiative to combine forestry and agriculture to enable smallholder farmers to care for the land and build an ecologically friendly oasis in the middle of Nigeria. According to the UN projection, there will be 10 billion inhabitants on Earth by 2050. How we would feed this rapidly growing world population without destroying our planet still remains a mystery. Modern agriculture has been great for mass production of food. It has helped fight famine and allowed huge industries to be built across the world. But it is showing its limitations. For one thing, it was not designed with the longevity of our planet in mind. Today's food production is causing approximately 30% of the world's greenhouse gas emission. We use 70% of the available potable water on Earth to grow our food. While our palates are becoming more and more sophisticated, as is our consciousness about what we eat, the focus on large-scale agriculture has also stripped us of the variety of foods that are readily available for consumption. More than 90% of the planet's crop varieties have disappeared, and the lack of diversity in what we eat has given rise to worldwide health concerns. What if we could cause less damage to the earth while still eating the foods we love? In the face of these stark realities, the BD Health Foundation's pioneering efforts in quality became even more critical. Their success in marrying traditional knowledge with modern sustainable practices offers a beacon of hope, presenting a viable path forward to address these global challenges. Agroforestry systems are multifunctional systems that can provide a wide range of economic and social-cultural benefits to smallholder farmers' livelihoods, as well as alleviate their hardships and create a regenerative agricultural system that is not only environmentally friendly, but also regenerates the land. A regenerative agriculture, without a doubt, is important because it improves uh, food production and not only improve food production, it makes food accessible, and then the quality of food is better than any other food produced because it's mostly natural. Definitely this becomes um, very, very helpful for all of us, including the farmer, because the lifestyle of the farmer becomes better once he has access to food, he has increased production and he has healthy food, and the environment is better. So. It's something we should advocate because it's more about advocacy than just talking. A lot of people have just heard about regenerative agriculture but have not seen in practice or have not been taught. Regenerative agriculture system is slow to take off, but with inspirations from modeling farms in Brazil and India. Be the Help Foundation embarked on their own agroforestry journey. The proof of concept for this type of agriculture requires a minimum of at least a cycle of five years. But in just 18 months of setting up, the two hectare farm proved the concept of symbiotically growing plants and trees, setting the stage for a transformative and sustainable approach to agriculture in Nigeria. The foundation's threefold approach focused on ensuring water availability and accessibility, maximizing nutrient cycles using organic means, and harnessing trees' abilities to manage the carbon cycle. Um, regenerative agriculture simply implies the practices that is carried out by farmers that improves the soil health rather than depleting it. And this can depend on several factors uh, the incorporation of natural fertilizer or manure into the soil, mulching, uh, crop rotation, multi-cropping system, and so many other activities like intentional introduction of beneficial microorganisms into the soil. The use of this comprehensive approach has not only increased the land's resilience, 
but also improved local residents' access to and availability of food. Um, regenerative agriculture is more about practices rather than a model or a form of agriculture. So I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. It's not something tangible that you can hold on to and say, okay, um, like it has a prototype. It doesn't. So it's region, it's climate, it's weather that determines what type of practices that is carried out that intentionally helps the soil health to improve um, yield and productivity, um, concentrating on balancing the ecosystem to make the system of agriculture that has been practiced very resilient. The straightforward goal of this integrated system was to cultivate organic food and medicinal plants, as well as to create a seed bank, community development, agroforestry teaching center, and plant nursery for farmers. Our joint BDF Foundation in the year 2021, I've learned a lot in agroforestry. So when I wake up before the arrival of my colleagues, which are the mother heads, so I move straight to the board where I write out the activities for the day. About 58 tree plants present here in the nursery and each tree has their um, importance, both economic importance, medicinal purpose and food and fodder and also humans. The first year growing cycle was not easy as expected, but the group persisted. And by 2021, the once barren land has been turned into a flourishing heaven for agroforestry. The trees improved soil health and offered shade. The integration of beekeeping to enhance biodiversity and soil health recognizes bee as vital pollinators. By nurturing local bee populations and implementing regenerative techniques like planting diverse crops and minimizing chemical inputs, these not only produce honey but also play a crucial role in fostering a thriving ecosystem. The food the bees will eat is very, very important. And also for you getting 100% uh, natural or organic honey, you need to first look at the environment. Here in BHF, this is what we have done so far for the bees. We first of all create the environment that is conducive for the bees by creating a forest. And the, the forest has different trees, different flowers around and all the flowers, all, all, the, all the trees, most especially the, the, the eucalyptus, provide nectars, provide flowers throughout the years for, 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 for bees. That's, that's food for bees. Because if there are no flowers around, then bees find it difficult to get their food. And that also happens that they, they will have to travel a distance to, to go get nectar. But here, traveling Far away to get nectars, we have, we, have, we, have, we have an environment that has all the nectars they need to pick from the trees we have here. So pollination also in our farm to increase the productivity of the farm also is highly involved and the, the bees are doing the excellent work for us in the aspect of the pollination. This is how our honey is purely natural and purely organic. This harmonious blend of regenerative agriculture and beekeeping showcases a model where bees and farmers work in synergy to promote environmental resilience and sustainable food production. I choose beekeeping because a lot in bee, we miss out when we have a, a forest situation like this. When we have a forest like this, we have enough food that bees can feed on and be choosing it, I look at it. So having a teaspoon of honey in where you have a forest like this, it means you have a lot of medicinal value attached to it because where bees pick their nectars determines the taste and quality of that honey of which if they take their nectars from eucalyptus, they take their nectars from any flowering, flowering plant and the medicinal 
value that particular plant has, they take it together to inculcate it in their honey. So having a forest like this, it, it was an opportunity for me to choose beekeeping because it will help me utilize the forest I, I also have around me. Although it is a demonstration center, as opposed to a primary production center, it has plans to evolve into a long-term research center that grows plants that are unlikely to exist in the ecosystem. All of these plants are grown using practically proven methods that produce a balanced ecosystem with little to no mechanization and chemicals to prevent soil disturbance. These common things that we have every day in the communities. It's all we want. We don't want to bring something strange. In just four mention. years, its commitment to regenerative agriculture has produced results and established a precedent for sustainable farming practices that can boost Nigeria's food productions capable to feed other West African countries. With this Napier grass here, you are going to use this in feeding of your, your cattle. As you plant, after your planting for three weeks, you can start pruning them and give to your cattle. And beside that, you can also use your napier grass for munching. And you can also use it for composting. Just like the napier grass, every other plant was intentionally planted because of its ecological or commercial benefits. Uh, BD Health Foundation um, nursery is uh, packed with a lot of seedlings uh, that are beneficial economically, that are beneficial to our health, that are beneficial to also our livestock. The cows, I take care of them, feed them very well, give them food three times a day. Morning, afternoon, evening, especially napier grass. It's very, very good for them. This is what I used to feed them. By integrating cattle into the farming system, BD Health Foundation is able to harness their natural behaviors to improve soil health, increase biodiversity, and reduce the need for synthetic inputs. Through rational grazing, where cattle are moved regularly to different pasture areas, the land benefits from natural fertilization, reduced soil compaction, and enhanced carbon sequestration. This symbiotic relationship between cattle and the land not only foster healthier ecosystems, but also yield organic produce that is free from harmful chemicals. Now, with the use of micromobilizers known as Jivama Roof, offers a sustainable and environmentally friendly alternative to chemical fertilizers, which enhances soil structure and fertility, water retention capacity, and crop productivity, hence a sustainable agricultural practice. This adoption not only benefits farm productivity, but also aligns with efforts to combat climate change and ensure long-term agricultural sustainability in the region. This is organic we are talking of. And in this organic we are talking of, it has no effect. And because it has no effect, after your application, your usage, you consume meat. It has no effect. Like unlike that of the inorganic fertilizer and people use in the field, we encourage people not to go on that reason because what you don't eat, you don't give to your plant. In addition to growing a 13 hectare model farm, the regenerative agricultural system has drawn interest from organizations and individuals outside of Nigeria. Notably among these are Mashtakat Foundation, Professor Yemi Oshibanjo, Nigeria's former Vice President. As a result of these, a training center was established and over 1,500 farmers now have the knowledge and expertise necessary to adopt sustainable techniques. 
experts in every facet of sustainable regenerative agriculture provided guidance during the training. And for such reason, smallholder farmers see Build Health Foundation as a ray of hope in the modern world. There are about 50 varieties of guava, bitter cola, mahogany, cashew, eucalyptus, shea butter tree, and so much more. With about 100,000 tree seedlings raised annually since 2020 on this farm, planted over 30,000 and continuously raising some more each, about 50,000 trees of 53 varieties. Now getting rid of all the old seedlings to raise another 100,000. On each hectare of land, a minimum of 2,500 to 3,500 trees are planted and currently nursed, plus another 75,500 to 100,000 trees so far on 12 plus hectares of land. And also, over 25 stable and perennial crops, shrubs, medicinal plants, and so much more. As Build the Help Foundation looks towards the future, their vision extends beyond quality. The goal is to empower more farmers and make ecologically sound farming a reality for everyone by establishing knowledge centers in all the geopolitical zones across the country and beyond the Nigerian borders. They are planting the seeds for revolution that will pay off for many generations to come by collaborating closely with organizations, local farmers, and specialists from a variety of agricultural fields. What I've appreciated about um, being on this farm with Be The Help Foundation is that the whole team has worked together and brought their strengths to the table and they've created an amazing learning experience for us um, both in terms of showing us the practical sides, but then also the theory. Um, they have both expert knowledge and um, great hospitality. So truly for us, it was a very holistic experience. We enjoyed it. And I'm really grateful to God for um, Be The Help Foundation and all of the organizers and also for our, our own um, organization, The Rings of Hope. And you know, it's great. It's, it's been a wonderful time. This, the environment at the BDHair Foundation is very serene. I'm, I'm surprised what the importance of the trees in agroforestry is. Um, where I come from, the trees um, are part of forests and the forests, they are on, on their own and apart from agriculture. But here I can see and I can experience that the trees and agriculture goes together. To be here and to see that and see how it works and that it works, that is truly amazing. What I've seen in Be The Herb Foundation has really changed my mentality towards agri generally. From this training, I've realized many things. I've never known that this agroforestry is something that exists. But coming down to this training has really opened my mindset and I've seen the importance of what agroforestry is all about. The five-year adventure has barely just begun. As the sun sets on the five-year project life cycle of the agroforestry project, the foundation laid in 2019 has grown into an enduring legacy that will yield results for many years to come.